2022 was a great year to be a gamer and I know that we're kind of biased but we're pretty sure that Nintendo won so we kind of just wanted to celebrate their year with you guys and go over the 10 best Nintendo Switch games that came out this year. Yeah Nintendo had a fantastic year. These are all going to be kind of ranked so make sure you stick around to the end to find out what the best Switch game of 2022 was. If you could hit those like and subscribe buttons down there, that would be fantastic. It really means the world to us. Or hit the dislike button if you don't like us. That's fine too. True. But anyway, let's get into this list. So the first game I wanted to talk about today was Potion Permit. Potion Permit is like a cozy indie game, which has obviously got the Switch written all over it. So we had to it's have one. It's got you written all over it as well. <laughs> it does. It's like the perfect game for me. So I could not put it on this list. I don't know if we've talked about Potion Permit on the channel before. I think we might have mentioned it in our recap of the Wholesome Direct. Yeah, you're right. I was like, no, we definitely haven't, but no, we actually have. Yeah, you're right. I have been absolutely stoked for it ever since then. I think that the thing that really drew me to Potion Permit was the art style. So it's got an absolutely beautiful pixel art style. I'm a sucker for pixel art. So it's like an RPG with life sim elements as well, where you run an apothecary and you have to cure all of the sick people in your town. It basically just screams coziness and it's perfect for the Switch. So I definitely had to make it one of my favorites this year. The first game I am going to talk about is a little unknown title called Bayonetta 3. Now, I am going to cheat right off the bat here and admit that despite having this giant collector's edition, we haven't actually played the game. We haven't played it. We've seen other people play it, but we just know, we just know that it deserves to be on this list. It just is one of the best Switch games. Exactly. It's a little bit different for the Switch. It's a little bit more adult, just a fun, good time. So sorry for cheating, but um, it's our video. <laughs> Splatoon 3, oh. obviously. <laughs> I think you would honestly be hard pressed to find a 10 best Switch games of the year that doesn't have Splatoon 3 on it. 10 best Switch games of all time video, man. This thing rocks. It sold like 7 million copies in its first like three months or something. So we're obviously three not the weeks. only ones. Three weeks? Pretty sure. Oh Jesus, really? I need to... It just sold a lot in a short <laughs> amount of time. Let's just, let's just roll with that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the numbers right now, but yeah. A lot. Something hectic. Yeah. So there's not really any other way to describe Splatoon 3 other than the fact that it's just like classic Nintendo. So they've taken a really popular genre, the shooter genre, and just like wholesome, wholesome fight it. <laughs> yeah, wholesome fight. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. <laughs> so they've taken out all of the blood and the gore and the violence, everything that's related with shooters the and the guns. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's guns. Oh, I mean. The splatlings and splat brallas and Yeah, rollers that's true, and... that's true, that's true. None of them are really... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so basically they've taken a shooter and they've just turned it into like a giant paintball game. It is just like pure fun. It's super fast paced and I don't know, you're just going to have an epic time if you ever wanted to try this game out for sure. We made a video asking the question, is it the best shooter on the Nintendo Switch? And the answer is yes. It was yes. Yeah, it is. Okay, well now I can actually talk about a game that I have played, Pokemon Legends Arceus. This at the time was the best Pokemon game to have ever released. It was our first little taste of that open world-esque, open zoned Pokemon. It was the first time that they'd done something a little bit different, but still in line with the mainline series. Like it's no Pokemon Snap or something completely different. Yeah. But it's it's got that little something something, you know? It's spicy. Yeah, it is spicy. <laughs> Basically, it was just a breath of fresh air from the Pokemon company. It's what we'd all been asking for from the Pokemon game for so long. And they really answered our prayers with that. It had new forms of Pokemon, a new way to catch things throwing mud at people and things. Thanks. That's never worked out for me. Every time I throw mud at a Pokemon, it just gets mad and chases me. I don't know what it was like supposed to do, but maybe I'm just using- Honestly, don't around. throw mud at animals, kids. It's just probably not a good idea. <laughs> this isn't going to be the only Pokemon game on the list. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. 
but it is definitely one of the best games to release this year. And we just hope that it's not a one-off from the Pokemon company. We would love to see a Legends game every generation. So, please. Please. So I've been a huge fan of Rune Factory 4 on the Switch. I definitely put it on one of our videos. Maybe it was like the Cozy Games video. I'm not sure, but I've been a fan of the Rune Factory series for ages. So I was super excited for Rune Factory 5 to come out and I definitely wasn't disappointed by it. I played the crap out of this game and I loved every second of it. It's basically like your classic farming life sim, but with a bit more badassery. There's a bit of combat and a bit of monsters mixed in there. It's like the perfect blend of action and sim, which I personally am a huge fan of. Now, Laura, we all know this game wasn't exactly perfect upon release. What do you have to say about its bugs and glitches? Well, I love the game enough to be able to look past them. I'm, you know, there's perfectionists with their games, right? There's like game snobs, people that are going to be like, oh my God, there's like a skipped frame here. I'm not going to play the game at all. But I'm not one of those people, obviously. We've come to figure that out, I feel. I mean, here it is in 10 best games on the Switch in 2022. So exactly. it's clearly a good experience otherwise. At its core, it is a totally epic experience and I definitely recommend it. Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Oh my God, my boy Kirby came out of the park just swinging with this title. If you know one thing about me, it's that I love 3D platformers and Kirby's first entry in the 3D genre, whoo he did not disappoint. This thing is up there with any of the best Mario's. And maybe my favorite part about it is that the whole thing is playable in co-op. So we actually got to play it together. It was so fun. And I also really love the fact that Laurel prefers to play as Waddle Dee. So I really liked I, the spear. I get to be Kirby the whole time, man. So <laughs> it, it, it works out perfectly for both of us. This is also the highest selling game in the Kirby franchise. My boy has crossed 5 million units. It's taken him a long time but now he seems like he's a real player in Nintendo's franchises. He's definitely a mascot now. He's always been- He's always been he's a mascot. He's always been yeah. there, but he just hasn't quite been as popular. And this was the game to do it. Honestly, I just, I can't praise this one enough. I love 3D platformers. This is one of the best of all time. And therefore it's one of the best on the Nintendo Switch. Get on it, you will not be disappointed. So I was saying before that Rune Factory 5 was like the perfect blend of farming life sim with like more badassery in it and Harvestella is absolutely like that but it's way more polished than Rune Factory. So Harvestella is by Square Enix so it doesn't really suffer from many of the technical difficulties that Rune Factory 5 does. Harvestella is like the perfect blend of an epic JRPG and a farming sim and I feel like those are actually probably my favorite games. I think that's a theme in my life that I love games like that. Cozy farming sims but with like epic combat and boss fights and more action. More meat and potatoes. Yeah I want yeah. some meat and potatoes. <laughs> And Harvestella actually nearly made it to my top spot. So if you haven't played it yet and you like farming sims and combat, then I definitely recommend giving this one a go. I feel like this is also a perfect place to just jump in and say, this is kind of our top five individually. Yeah. Because I think Kirby is a better game than Harvestella. And I stole Kirby and Laura couldn't talk about it. So who knows where she would place Kirby. So as much as this is a top 10, it's kind of two individual top fives. So it's kind of like my top five and Tom's top five and they're each ranked, but we also love all of the mm. games together, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, there's no doubt that you love all my games and I love all your games, yeah. The best strategy RPG of 2022 goes to... <laughs> Triangle Strategy. It's not going to win any awards for its name because its name kind of sucked, but oh my god, Triangle Strategy is just fantastic. Not just in its genre, but for games on the Switch in 2022 as a whole. So this title is by the amazing team Asano from Square Enix, and we all know them for their HD 2D pixel art style, and it is just something that we absolutely adore. Anything in this art style, we are instantly picking uh -huh. it up. And Triangle Strategy is no disappointment. 
So yeah, the art style is beautiful, but the story, for me at least, was the highlight of this game. There are so many different routes you can take and my experience was completely different to Laura's experience which is probably going to be completely different to your experience as well. Mm. The gameplay though is also fantastic. Think Final Fantasy Tactics if you're ever a fan of that. You know, pretty classic tactical RPG with some other interesting elements. Basically, this game is just such a unique experience for anybody who plays it. So I guess you might play it and hate it. That's always a possibility that I hadn't really thought about until Maybe now. Maybe try playing it again and then you, <laughs> you might, get might a love it. Yeah. <laughs> But I absolutely adored it. Laura can vouch for it. We mm. both loved it. Triangle strategy, best strategy. He game. played it twice in a row. Yeah, I don't usually do that either. He stole my turn. So before we get to our number one top favorite games of 2022, we just wanted to say that it's so hard to pick just 10. There were so many incredible games that came out this year. So how about we do like a little sizzle reel? Yeah, some... let's do some honorable mentions. Yeah. Here. Just quickly. Yeah. Two Point Campus, fantastic management sim. Beer and Breakfast, so cute. I was looking forward to this game for like years, it felt like. Sonic Frontiers, I'm surprised Laura didn't pick this because it's janky as hell, but really good. She loved the janky ones apparently. And Switch Sports, how could we talk about Nintendo games and not include the successor of the <laughs> almighty Wii Sports? <laughs> it's perfect for families. Laura doesn't sport. like it. Laura doesn't like it. That's why I was not here. She refused to let me put it in this list. <laughs> it's just not quite for me. I don't know. There's something about it. Frogan, if you like platformers from the PS1 or Nintendo 64 era, then this one is for you. So my personal favorite game of 2022. I think you will know what I'm going to say. <laughs> it's obviously Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. How could it be anything else? You guys have been made painfully aware of our Scarlet and Violet obsession by this point. So I'm anxious to go too far into it here. The last two videos in a row were all about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So if you want to know all of the juicy details, then you can go check those out. But they are the first ever open world Pokemon games. Need I say more? <laughs> So this is kind of like a Rune Factory 5 scenario where the, the execution isn't quite on point, <laughs> but at their core, they are so much fun. And if you are sort of more chill, easygoing sort of a person, and you can like look past stuff like that, then they'll probably still be your favorite games as well, honestly, because they are just so much fun. Thus, they're such fun games. We're not all perfect. But do you know what is perfect, Laura? <laughs> My favorite game <laughs> of the year. <laughs> there is one game that, in my opinion, hands down wins it. I love Pokemon. I'm also obsessed with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But this one just beats the hell out of it in every way possible. I am, of course, talking about the beautiful, the illustrious, the gorgeous Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Oh my god. I love this game. If you're a fan of RPGs, you owe it to yourself to check out Xenoblade Chronicles in general, actually. But 3 is the best game in the series. Monolith Soft knows how to use the Switch and they know how to make an open world. Laura's favorite game of all time, Breath of the Wild, would not have been possible without this studio. Nintendo bought in Monolith Soft to help them craft that open world. So if that doesn't tell you something, then I don't know what will, man. This thing is perfect. The music, hands down, best music in a video game this year, was robbed at the Game Awards, by the way. Visuals, absolute stunning. The environments in particular are gorgeous, but the character design is amazing, as well as the enemy design as well. Story. Oh, oh man, this is like the most hectic roller coaster you have ever gone on in your whole life, and you just don't know where it ends. It like goes into a black hole at the end because <laughs> just wow, just wow. And gameplay. That's actually probably its weakest point, which sounds weird. For me, I love it. 
but I do understand this like auto battling kind of like MMOE-esque battle system isn't for everyone. I will admit that. I personally loved it, but if there's one thing that might turn you off this game, it's that. For me though, this thing is outright perfection. And Laura and I did agree before that it does deserve the win for best game of 2022. Pokemon's good, but it's just a little bit janky, you know? It's like that, that, that ugly dog, you know? The that, ugly pug. Yeah, it's okay. This one though, this is like a glorious corgi wearing diamonds. I don't even like corgis, I don't know why I said that. Anyways, I've probably banged on about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 enough now. It's great. You should get it. <laughs> So those, my friends, were the 10 best Nintendo Switch games of 2022, in our opinion anyway, because obviously any sort of list has got to be subjective to some degree. Yeah, we say that these are the best games of this year, but really they're kind of just our favourite games of this year. Make sure though you let us know what your favourite games of this year are. We are actually genuinely interested. Hey. Put all consoles in it. Why not? Yeah. Leave that in the comments below. Actually, let us know if you'd like to see our favorite games of other consoles as well, because we don't just play the Switch. It's true. I know it seems like it, but we play everything. We just <laughs> love video games, full stop. It's an expensive addiction. <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, we don't it's do better. Pretty cheap compared to Thank you so much for watching and finding out what our favorite games of 2022 were. Again, we would love to hear yours. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave and we'll see you next week. See you later friends. Bye. Bye.